Hi, this is Ramini Bodipour, Senior Systems Engineer at Netscope, and this is part two of the Netscope Private Access Demo. Uh, today I'm going to elaborate and demonstrate on how we can create private access policies that use Okta as our access management source to provide application controls regardless of where the users uh, or the application resides. Uh, now many enterprises are adopting cloud-based access management to augment their existing AD infrastructure, and some only use cloud to deliver these services. In this demo, we have a corporate data center that resides on-premise and serves various critical applications. You can see Splunk, Ubiquity. And then we also have a VPC in AWS that serves additional critical applications, in this case, Jira and GitHub. Now in this hybrid environment, we have site-to-site -site VPN and MPLS circuits that we could use, but they're just too costly to maintain as well as too complex, especially with application fan out. Furthermore, as enterprises shift to work from home policies, being able to easily apply user and group-based policies to application access, as well as deliver new apps on demand to your users becomes even more critical. So let's see how to configure Netscope Private Access and our IDP to address this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our IDP, in this case, Okta. We're gonna deploy what's called the Netscope app. The Netscope app is gonna create the trust relationship between our Okta instance and our Netscope instance. In this case here, we have it configured with our tenant identifier. Now, once we've configured the Netscope app, we're gonna create assignments, and we're gonna create user and group assignments within this application in Okta. So we can see we have a bunch of users here. We have a list of groups as well, database administrators, Linux server administrators, Windows servers, SOC analysts, IT administrators, and we can import this list from AD, but in this case here, what we did was we went ahead and created these users and groups directly in Okta. So once we have these user and groups, we're gonna create a push notification to our tenant in, in Netscope. That way we can provide these users and groups to Netscope. And that's all we really need to do in Okta to provide the communication to our Netscope tenant. Now, if we come over to our Netscope platform, we can see here that we have all of those users imported directly into the tool through that push notification. And we also have all of the uh, groups associated uh, with those users within Okta. And we can see the different users in those groups. So once we have that information in, now what we want to do is we want to deploy what's called a publisher. A publisher is just a lightweight OVA that's going to control the outbound communication from the app to the Netscope tenant, which allows our clients to communicate. We're not going to be creating any inbound rules. This application only needs to be installed within the network where those applications reside. As you see here, we have two publishers, one in AWS, and one in our corporate data center, which we call MX Homefront. Once these publishers are turned on and connected and communicating with the Netscope service, we can start to add applications. We can see here, we have a list of applications that we created within the Netscope tenant. We have an MPA publisher, which is the actual OVA uh, that we need to have SSH access into in AWS. We have another on our corporate data center, which is vSphere to communicate with our virtual stack ESXi. We also have a Jira application running in AWS. We have an Ubuntu server running in AWS. And we have a few more applications that we have running in our corporate data center. Now, each of these applications requires a different protocol to communicate with. And let's take a look at the policies associated with those. If we come over to our real-time protection engine, you can see here that I have a set of policies that define which users can access which applications over which protocols. So we can see here this first, first policy is our corporate apps policy. And this is gonna be allowing users to communicate to our JIRA application over HTTPS and AWS. So this is applied to all users. We can see here we have another policy that defines our IT administrators. And this is gonna be for any application access or UI access over AD and 443 in AWS, as well as our corporate data center. And we can see the list of applications here that our IT administrators will have access to. We have another policy that defines where our Linux server and database administrators can go and what applications they can access. In this case here, the back end Ubuntu server, which Jira is running off of, we need to provide SSH access to for those specific users. And we can see here the groups defined, our database administrators and our Linux server administrators. The next one is for our security team. We need to provide UI access to our corporate data center where they can access the UI for Splunk and they can do their SIM correlations. This is for SOC analysts. Um, we can also uh, provide access to other applications, in this case, Cloud Threat Exchange, so that they can manage security incidents. And again, these are running in our corporate data center. 
And finally, we have another policy here to provide Windows Server administrators access into the Windows Server over RDP port 3389 in our corporate data center. So the way that we have this configured, we have different users that have different requirements to run over different protocols to access different applications. And so that's how we can granularly create these policies to support this type of environment. And we can create these as granular or as simplistic as we want. If we wanted to, we can create one simple policy that defines all the applications, that defines all the protocols, and provides access to any user. It can be as simple or as granular as you like it to be. So that's how easy it is to configure an IDP uh, to work with our Netscope tenant to be able to configure application access and provide the controls necessary um, in your environment. Thank you and have a good day.